Throughout the entire four and a half years that I've been living and traveling all across Mexico, one of my favorite things about this country are the handmade products, things that people pour their heart and soul into. They pass down their traditions and their craft from generation to generation. Today, I have the opportunity to show you an awesome example of this. I am here in the leather capital of Latin America, Leon, Guanajuato. We are going to head into a very modest workshop to show you the process of how some shoes are made. So I am actually here with my friend, Julian who I met back in Querétaro. So this is your supplier's workshop and we're about to get a demo now of what the process looks like to make these gorgeous shoes. To start out at this factory, they don't make the leather here. As it so happens, they have another factory for making the leather. 60% of the process is done here, 40% is done beforehand. You know, that's like the kind of gross stuff, the skinning it and you know, anything to do with the blood and guts of it all. And that has to be done in a different area because of the chemicals that are used and the smell. This is in a more residential areas so that's why they get it when they get it it looks like this and in order to turn it various colors they use this big apparatus over here and to turn it colors like this these browns you know dark brown and like the lighter brown colors they use a type of dust and they roll it around in this giant barrel for about eight hours Next, they've got to throw it in a smaller barrel for the drying process. This can take anywhere between one to two days, sometimes longer, depending on the time of year, whether it's the rainy season or the dry season. We're about to head to another part of the factory where they do a different type of processing. If the leather isn't meant to have those natural earthy tones like the browns, then it's here. They can paint it with various colors and then they hang it up to dry. I also gotta give a shout out to these adorable but ferocious dogs they have on the property who were both mad at our presence and very curious what we were doing there. Now let's head back to their other factory to see what it looks like once the leather is all prepped, painted, and ready and how that turns into a shoe. If you're digging this video so far and you wanna see more like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So I am here with Paco, one of the owners of this factory. Mi bisabuelo hace 70 años, luego le siguió mi abuelo pero paterno, o sea, el esposo de mi abuelita. Este, lleva más de 50 años este, en el negocio de, del calzado, ha viajado por toda Europa aprendiendo este, muchos conocimientos. Luego siguió mi papá, es como la herencia que nos ha dejado este, pues, mi abuelo, más que nada. Y aquí si nos ve, pues, mi hermano que también está ahí trabajando, mi primo. Un trabajador, somos prácticamente cerca de la familia. 40 familiares aquí en este negocio. Wow. Este, pues que sí, que aquí en ese tajabancito se, se hacen muchos pares uh -huh. este, para, todo, para todo México y parte de Estados Unidos. Wow, increíble. Sí. Muchas gracias por invitarnos aquí para ver todo el proceso. Increíble la historia de tu familia en la fábrica. No, yo encantado de que conozcan un poquito el proceso del calzado y que vean cómo se hace aquí en México y en León, en el barrio del Cuesillo, que es el tradicional de, pues de México. Uh -huh. o sea, sí, sí, sí. La capital del calzado, se dice. Uh -huh. Bueno, muchas gracias. No, ¿de qué? And this is where the magic starts. This is where it all begins. So here's where things start getting really interesting. They first use a stencil to cut the leather into the shoe's shape. Supposedly, this is the shoe's shape. Honestly, even with my artistic mind, I can't picture how this is going to be a shoe. I'm thinking, is this all the leather that's needed for one shoe? Are there other pieces they sew together? Time will tell, I suppose. If they don't cut the pieces by hand, they also have this gigantic, powerful pressing machine, seriously, this thing is taller than I am, that punches metal stencils to cut the leather. Next, they apply a layer of glue to the inner curve, which I'm assuming would be the part around your ankle, and then they make five millimeter cuts in the curves. And very carefully, he crimps the leather together to start creating the form. As you can see, those tiny cuts are necessary for the material to lay flat. Next, he applies another layer of glue, which we will soon see is for a unique design element of this particular model. While that partially dries, the tassels are made. This is what they look like on the final product. This was a much more meticulous process of cutting, gluing, and tying than I would have imagined. 
Paco explained that it's actually very complicated, and all I can say is wowza. This takes an incredible amount of patience and dexterity. And finally, at this station, a ridge is formed by crimping together the leather in this horseshoe shape. Moving on, we head over to the sewing station. First of all, this guy is an absolute wizard at his craft. He seamlessly switches from another model of shoe to this one, shameless pun intended. First he changes out the thread colors and he just gets right to work. To answer my own question from earlier, yes, there are other pieces of material needed to make this shoe. For instance, it has an inner lining, which is what he's sewing together here. In record time, he's already switching to the exterior leather. I mean, seriously, look at what a speed demon this guy is. I pretty much blinked and he had the entire shoe sewn together with perfectly straight stitches. The following step is to apply glue so the two pieces can be sewn together. Finally, our amigo here does a bit of trimming and it's ready to pass off to the next person. Now we will head back into the other part of the workshop where they will attach a steel sole. Yes, steel. I was surprised by that. What you see here is him nailing the inner sole to a hard plastic mold to help create the shoe's final shape. A bit more trimming is necessary, then he begins to apply a layer of glue to the sole and also to the inside of the shoe's leather. Throughout the process, I kept thinking, wow, they're using their hands with all these glues? I would think the chemicals would be dangerous, but given that they've been doing this for decades, I'm going to have to assume that they know the procedure and any risks associated with it. Anyway. With all this super strong glue applied, he's able to stretch the leather over the mold and the sole. I don't know why, but this was so mesmerizing and satisfying to watch because you can really see it start coming together here. Also, he's just like really good at his craft. All of them are. There was probably about five minutes of stretching and pounding at this step until he proudly showed us what is really starting to look like an actual shoe now. It's not finished though, of course. Over here, you have this powerful sanding machine where he roughs up the leather on the bottom to create enough texture for the exterior sole to adhere properly. Wow, apparently today is the day for rain here in Leon, so I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear me, but at this point, they're gonna have to wait one day or ideally two days or more for that to dry so it doesn't fall apart in the next step. So then after the one or two days are over, once the glue has completely dried, the next step is going to be to put the sole uh, attached the sole to the, sh the shoe. So they have this really scary, powerful machine over here that basically pushes that sole up into it. And then, did I hear right that they use this heating yeah, it's where the, thing? Yeah. So that like really solidifies the glue on there. So this is all that's missing. <laughs> this, this last part. We just pretty much saw an entire shoe being made today, here. <laughs> there are a few other details that go into the shoes as well, like attaching those tassels we saw them make earlier, and using the stamping machine to imprint a gold logo on the insole. Start to finish, I was both incredibly impressed and completely surprised by everything that goes into making a single pair of shoes. Okay, so Giuliano, I have a question for you. Why shoes? How did you start this in the first place? Well, the idea was born uh, with my late wife. We were talking about uh, creating a brand, um, you know, clothing and shoes um, for both sexes, you know, female and, and male. Mm -hmm. um, since I'm, you know, by myself now here in Mexico. You kind of wanted to carry it out, you were saying, exactly. in her honor? Yes, exactly. So, so I was just one day on Facebook, Facebook Marketplace and I, uh, I met Paco and we were chatting about uh, you know, shoes and his work. I, mm -hmm. I, I liked the guy and I liked his, his products. So we were just talking about you know, creating something cool and new. 
and if that would even be possible, you know, yeah. create yeah. something that would be your vision. Like, exactly. I mean, these behind me, I don't know if you guys can see how brightly colored they are. <laughs> that I think is super unique. Yeah. And you wanted to do that, why? Why well, bright colors? Um, Mexico's a happy place. I, I kind of wanted to imprint that in, in the shoes and in, mm -hmm. in the brand. Like incorporate the vivacity of the bright colors, like you <laughs> see it in the pottery exactly. well, and food. Exactly, well, and, mm -hmm. and I live in Guanajuato. Guanajuato is very colorful, San Miguel in Super. Guanajuato City, mm -hmm. so this is, you know, this represents mm -hmm. Guanajuato. And so I thought it was interesting today, I was seeing all of this for the first time. I had no idea how something could go from a piece of fabric to this amazing creation. It really makes you appreciate it all the more. And something else, when it comes to a business like this, you're just starting out. You're in the stages of like trying to get off the ground. Yeah. So I will send you guys to Giuliano's Facebook page so that you can stay up to date with what's going on with his business. I'll link that down in the description. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. On the screen here is a video I made last week on Mexico City with a big announcement at the end so you'll definitely want to check that out. One more thing before you go. <laughs> and gong that bell so you get notified the next time I release a new video and I hope to see you there.